Alexandria is one of the most historically significant cities in the world. It was once the ancient world's centerpiece during a time when the ancient library of Alexandria was a beacon of hope and an answer to many people's thirst for knowledge. It was all thanks to this man. Alexander the Great's conquests led to many victories, but Ptolemy Soter's rule after his passing was where this all began. The library's destruction happened centuries ago under strange circumstances, and in our time, this place became an idea. An idea that slowly became the reinvention of an ancient reality. The new Library of Alexandria. Demetrius of Phalerum was an Athenian orator, originally from Phalerum, present-day Athens. Demetrius was a distinguished statesman who was appointed by the Macedonian king Cassander to govern the city. He made enemies and was exiled to Thebes and then to the court of Alexandria after 297 BC. Demetrius is credited with the proposition of the idea of a universal library in Alexandria. The library's construction began in 1989 and was completed in 2001. It is an 11-story building, unique due to its tilted spherical form. The building itself spans 160 meters in diameter and reaches up to 32 meters in height, going down 12 meters into the ground. The library's impressively grand interior holds upon its shelves some of the most influential works of literature in human history. The majority of its space is profoundly rich with books in many languages. English literature, French, Greek, Latin, Arabic, and more. The authors whose works are present include the likes of French writer, philosopher, and satirist Voltaire. As a prevalent political satirist, his work was often interwoven into the fabric of society in his own perspective due to how outspoken he was. From the Greek writers of old, Plato, Aristotle, Sophocles, and Homer, whose works in philosophy and poetic genius provide a great example of intellectuality to a plethora of books documenting Greek literature throughout the many periods of ancient history. The presence of a Latin section was also surprising due to my own personal admiration of Dante Alighieri, the father of the Italian language. The Latin literature that has survived consists mainly of classical works such as his Divine Comedy. It was wonderful to see the preservation of a language we now deem dead. The interior also houses the old machinery used in the Bulaa press. This was the first Egyptian press of its kind. Upon seeing these machines, I was taken aback by how amazingly well preserved they were, and how something so big, nowadays, has become so small and works with the single push of a button. This press was established in 1820 under the rule of Muhammad Ali Basha. The assembling of these machines began a year later, and the first publication of the press was an Arabic-Italian dictionary used in 1822. At first I thought that the Bulat press was just that, a press, but I found out during my time here that its inception was a defining moment. 
This place and these machines guided Egypt out of the Dark Ages and gave the people a more tangible source of knowledge in the form of books that were more accessible. Next to the press exhibit, the library also has several busts dedicated to great Egyptian writers such as Ahmad Shawi, Abbas Al Aed, Naguib Mahfouz, and Taha Hussein, who happens to have a special needs library dedicated to him here. The Taha Hussein Library for the Visually Impaired gives you, as a blind or visually challenged person, the opportunity to access all of the resources that the Library of Alexandria has to offer. This library provides computer courses for the visually impaired and also contains some old machinery. A particular example would be the old Braille typewriter. The blind are also encouraged to artistically express themselves with a certain portion of the library dedicated to their artistic projects. This place was genuinely inspiring to visit, and having a word with someone who actually works here made it all the more significant. The Anwar al-Sadat Museum is the first in Alexandria to be dedicated to the late president. It was made as a part of the library's endeavor to document the modern history of our nation. This place is a testament to the impact the former Egyptian president made on our country and on the rest of the world. His life is celebrated here, where his belongings decorate the walls. The museum has a collection of his medals, articles of clothing that he wore, including the military suit he wore on the day he was assassinated. There are a number of his portraits here, as well as other personal belongings. We now have the chance to know more about someone whose political life left a defining mark in Egyptian history. Regardless of where you stand with this man's political career, he stood for something. And that he did until his untimely death. This is the Oriental Art Exhibition. This exhibition displays a wonderful collection of ethnic jewelry and costumes, as well as folk-inspired paintings all belonging to Abdel Ghani Abul Anin and his wife Raya al -Nimr.
They both spent their lives collecting valuable folk art, doing their best to document the ethnic culture of Egyptian villages and oases. This happened to be part of their jobs as the first costume designers for the National Group of Folk Arts. El Nimr traveled across Egypt to gather this unique collection of wood and metal works, jewelry, costumes and ornaments. It was quite a sight to behold. Close to the Oriental exhibition was the artist's book. This exhibit is actually based on an event that happens every two years. It began in 2002 and holds some of the most unorthodox pieces of art made out of books. Each round of this event is always different and at the end of each the library chooses to keep the works of the artists that participated. Over time, all of what you see here has become its own diverse collection. These books, these paintings, are especially captivating due to how strange the exhibit seemed at first, but that only goes to show how art can be used as a means of communication. My last stop was the library's arts exhibition. This exhibit is extremely diverse, displaying works for artists and sculptors. The first of which was prominent contemporary sculptor Ahmad Abdel Waheb, whose work is inspired in part by the figure of the pharaoh Akhenaten. The exhibit also displays works by painter Hassan Suleiman, an old painter from the early 60s whose work was characterized by his use of various degrees of shade. And last but not least, it also displayed the works of artists Ahmed and Saif Wanli. Their paintings are extremely expressive, sports-based depictions. As I gazed at these meticulously painted works of art, I realized that the point of this library was not simply to be an empty successor to its predecessor. This place means something, and it stands for something greater. Self-betterment, self-development, creative growth. The pursuit of knowledge above all. The creative freedom seen here led me to one conclusion. The pursuit of knowledge is a noble cause. But it isn't only that, it is an art form in and of itself, and it is to be celebrated. And rightly so, this place celebrates it accordingly. <laughs>